The Huarang, also known as Flowering Knights, were the equivalent of the Western Knights or Chevaliers. The members were an elite warrior group of male youth who gathered in educational institutions as well as social clubs to study arts and culture, as well as religious teachings stemming mainly from Korean Buddhism. The Huarang's physical beauty is referred to in some Chinese sources. As with many things about ancient Korean history, the information we have on the Huarang are from the Samguk Sagi, the Samguk Yusa, and the Hedong Gosung Jon. The later was compiled in 1215 during the Goryu dynasty. It's a compilation of mostly Korean Buddhist hagiographies, biographies of saints, monks, nuns, and icons. Sadly, these three works cite primary sources that are no longer among us. According to the Samguk Sagi and Samguk Yusa, the Wanhua preceded the Huarang. They were a class of female warriors in 6th century Shila. They were created during the reign of King Jinhun. The Wanhua consisted of around 300 young women chosen for their skill and beauty. There were two leaders, Namo and Junjong. When Junjong killed Namo, her rival, the class was abolished and was replaced by the all-male Huarang. The term Huanhua refers to devotion to philosophy and the arts. Following their abolishment, the Wanhua title was granted to female spiritual leaders of the Huarang. These Wanhua were a group of highly revered Buddhist nuns who spiritually guided the Huarang. Some refer to the Huarang as Buddhist monastic warriors. Buddhist monks were often mentors to the Huarang. The monks taught them how to strengthen their minds and bodies. These same monks practiced martial arts mainly to counter the effects of long-term meditation on the body and to protect themselves from bandits who tried to steal the donations collected by the monks on their pilgrimage to various parts of the kingdom. As a matter of fact, both the Buddhist monks and the Huarang would go on journeys to famous mountains to train and seek encounters with supernatural beings for the protection and continuing success of the kingdom. Wang Guang Bopsa was a Buddhist monk, scholar, and a teacher of the Shilla kingdom. His name means Wang Guang, teacher of the law. It is said that he went to Sui, China for 11 years to gain a greater understanding of Buddhism and was educated in the major texts of Hinayana and Mahayana Buddhism. He returned to Shilla in 600 and promulgated the Mahayana form of Buddhism to the common people by using simple terms and common words. He is best known for his five commandments for secular life, which were guiding ethos for the Huarang. Loyalty to one's Lord Devotion towards one's parents Trust among friends Never retreat in battle. Be selective in the taking of life. Wan Guang, as well as teaching his five commandments, trained the Huarang youth in self-defense, self-confidence, and self-control. His teachings were followed by the Huarang to protect the Shilla kingdom from the other kingdoms and to help unify the nation of ancient Korea. The Huarang trained in horsemanship, swordsmanship, archery, javelin, stone throwing, polo, and ladder climbing. Some famous Huarang were Kim Yushin, Kim Alchon, and Kim Won Sul. During Jinpyeong of Shilla rule, 
there were many more conflicts and battles with Pekche and Goguryeo. And because of these conflicts, there was political dissension and many failed uprisings. Buddhism was promoted as a spiritual guide to the kingdom and gained more importance. Jin Pyong reorganized the central ruling system of Shilla by instituting many new departments and making his immediate family related to the Buddha, making them even more separate from other noble houses. As mentioned earlier, his daughter, Sondok of Shilla, was the first queen of Shilla and second female sovereign recorded in East Asian history. There was discontent around her nomination as queen, and even Tang Emperor Taizong refused to acknowledge her as a ruler because she was a woman. Nonetheless, she ruled for 15 years. In 660, under King Muyol, Shilla allied itself with Tang China and, with its help, conquered Baekje with the leadership of General Kim Yushin. General Kim Yushin was a descendant of the royal house of Gaya. At 14, he joined the Huarang. His band was known as the Band of the Dragon Flower Tree. Kim was a model of good deeds and spirituality. There are many legends surrounding him. The Samguk Sagi mentions a time when Kim entered a cave in the mountains at the age of 16. He prayed for four days and swore to heaven that he would battle and defeat the kingdom of Goguryeo and the Malgal tribes of the north. Hearing of his resolve, an old man gives a magic formula to the young Kim. A year later, Kim goes to a deep valley, does the same thing and asks heaven for his sword to be given special powers. His wish comes through three days later as a light shines down from heaven and makes his sword shake. Another legend is about his father having a dream of the planets Saturn and Mars falling on top of Kim before his birth. Later, in 668, King Munmu and General Kim Yushin conquered Goguryeo. Then, in the next decade, Shila fought to expel these same Chinese forces from the peninsula. The northern region of the defunct Goguryeo state later re-emerged as Palhe. Shortly afterwards, Shila saw a rise in power of its monarchy at the expense of the Jingo nobility. Most Shila kings were from the Kim clan. To help unify the country politically, ruling aristocrats from the fallen kingdoms were relocated to where they were less likely to stir up rebellions. Certain members of these same families were required to regularly go to Gumsong. There were many slaves in Shila during these times. Some aristocrats had as many as 3,000 slaves. The capital, Gumsong, is described in the Samguk Yusa as having 35 palaces, 1,360 districts, 178,936 houses, and a population of around 900,000. No matter what changes the monarchy made to the system, the aristocracy was too entrenched in all elements of power. There were several armed aristocratic revolts in the late 7th and 8th centuries. Before unification, Shila stressed Buddhism and the monarch's role as a Buddhist king. After unification of the peninsula, Shila began to rely more on Chinese models of bureaucracy. Shinmun of Shila tried to move the capital to Daegu to extricate the base of royal power from the aristocratic clans. He established a system of nine national provinces similar to the nine provinces of China during the reign of King Yu. He also established the Gugak National Academy 
dedicated to training officials in the Confucian classics. In 735, Tang Emperor Xuanzong formally granted the Shilla King the territory south of the Pe, now Tedong, River. That land had been held, at least formally, by Tang since the 7th century following the Tang Shilla campaign that defeated Goguryeo. In 780, King Hegong was assassinated during a rebellion. It is said that he was killed by his two closest advisors because of his incompetence. Following his death and until the demise of the Shilla Empire, all future kings were little more than figureheads as powerful aristocratic families became increasingly independent from the power of the monarchy. Until its submission to the Goryeo dynasty, Shilla was in constant upheaval and powerful aristocratic families rose to actual dominance outside the capital of Gyeongju and the royal court. The bone rank system made it impossible to rise above the class of one's birth and it created stagnation of ideas and innovations. The aristocracy resented the power of the king. To top it off, the peasantry grew more and more resentful of the taxes levied upon them. This marks the end of part 2. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and share. Stay tuned for part 3.